Good morning, fellow photo geeks. I intend that as a compliment. If you're offended by that, I apologize. But you're probably a photo geek if you're watching this, so it's appropriate. But anyway, how are you? I am here today <laughs> to uh, go over my top 25 images from last year, 2022. And I'm going to break that up, I think, into five image chunks so these things don't get too long winded. I have a tendency to ramble. So sit down and get ready for some rambling because I'm going to talk about uh, my favorite 25 images of 2022. The quick preamble to this is that my favorites are not necessarily my best photos. And some of that is, some of them are great, I think. Uh, but that's the thing about best is it's totally subjective. So what I think is best is probably not what you think is best and everybody has different ideas on what is best. So these are, these are some of my favorites from the year. Uh, so some of these aren't even like particularly great images necessarily. They're just images that I love the experience of making them. And so the photograph is a part of that experience. And uh, so I might just love the image because of the experience of making it, uh, something like that. So, and then some of them I think are great images. So hang in there, we'll get started. I'm doing these just in chronological order. So not by like, this is the best image of the bunch or my favorite of the bunch, but we'll start in chronological order here. And this one comes from January on my 2022 winter Yellowstone workshop. And uh, this, it, it's actually the only image from that trip that made it into my top 25. And it's an odd image in that sense, but when we made some great images on that trip, but for whatever reason, uh, this image just grabs me. I like it. It's just kind of a ultra simple, ultra minimalist landscape photo of snow and fog and the dead trees, some of the bobby socks trees that uh, are in Yellowstone that um, some of the thermal activity uh, creates water that is not suitable for supporting life. And so as some of that water comes up out of the ground, it kills some of the trees that are in the vicinity of when that water comes up. And that's what happened here is all these trees got killed over the years. But anyway, so these are just some of the cool dead tree features in Yellowstone. I happened to like this composition with the three trees in front that are all broken off and dead. And then through the fog on this really cold winter morning, you can see the frost covered forest behind them. Uh, anyway, just super clean, ultra minimalist in the snow in Yellowstone in winter. Uh, I just dig this photo for its simplicity and the composition of getting these three elements lined up uh, the way I like them. So that is image number one. That one was shot with the uh, Nikon Z7 II. And that was with the 24 to 120 f4 lens at 120 millimeters 125th of a second, F11, ISO 200. Uh, and I was hand holding that. I did not bring a tripod out there on that little adventure. So I cranked the ISO up to 200 there to make sure I had enough speed, uh, shutter speed to get a sharp photo without a tripod there. So in you know reality, I should have probably had a tripod there. Then I could have gone to ISO 64 and had a slightly cleaner image there. But as it is, there's no noise in this image. It's beautiful. All right, moving on to image number two. Now we've gone all the way to Africa. So I went from the Yellowstone workshop in January, in early January, to Africa in early February. So this one was taken on February 3rd, and this is in Amboseli National Park in Kenya. So wonderful image. This is from early in the trip and uh, you know, the, the people say to have three elements in a frame really works together really well. And so my three elements here are obviously the big, the biggish bull that I put dead center, who is just dusting himself with some of the dust in front of his face. And then a smaller group of his family off to the right. And then 
a small group of his family a little further away off to the left. So it's got beautiful depth here with the big dark animal closest to us and then they get a little bit less dark and a little bit less dark as we look into the depth of that image. Uh, I chose to go to a black and white here with a slight sepia tone on it and I just, I love everything about it. I can't think of anything I don't like. I love the, the dust on the big bull, uh, some subtle texture in the clouds behind, and obviously the, the three elements in the frame there. So it's wonderful. That one was shot with the Sony A1, and that is on the 400 millimeter 2.8 lens with the teleconverter at 560 millimeters. Uh, 1 2500th of a second f4 ISO 400 and I shot that at f4 to kind of further give a little bit more depth to that image because if I had shot that at f11 that second group on the right would probably be sharp and then the further away group would be a little bit sharper too but so I like the separation of only the front bull is sharp and then they kind of fade away into uh, the bokeh as the, those two groups fade away. So uh, F4 I think was appropriate there on this one. You could absolutely shoot that at, with more depth of field and get the other two groups of elephants sharp. Uh, and that would look great too, I'm sure. But I chose to go um, here with trying to blur those other elephants out a little bit. Okay, on to the next one. Now we're on to my favorite African bird species. This is the crowned crane. They're fantastic and they're harder to photograph than you might think uh, to get a nice clean photo of them because they're usually just wandering around in the tall grass and they're often quite skittish, a little bit shy out there. So uh, this pair was kind of doing some mating type stuff like you could tell they were flirting with each other and they found a little um, kind of just an edge of one of the lakes there in Amboseli. And they were just kind of wandering around posing and then they kind of came together and gave this like little kiss. Uh, you know, that's not what they were doing. Whatever they were doing though, it looked like a little kiss. And so that was the moment of, I had shot a bunch of frames of these guys alone and together interacting. But this was the frame that to me was the most compelling with them kind of looking like they're giving each other a kiss. And uh, it was nice, soft, overcast light. Uh, I would have loved it if the water was perfectly calm there to get a nice reflection, but that wasn't given to me that day. So that's, this is what I had to work with. Uh, so I chose to include just a little bit of the, of the reflection in the composition, but this is really about the color and just the magnificence of these birds and that crown and the red and the golds and it's just lovely. So nice clean photo of a crowned crane which is hard to get. Um, anyway this one was shot with the Nikon Z9 and the 100 to 400 millimeter lens and uh, that was at f5.6 ISO 400 and 1 2,000th of a second. So plenty of shutter speed there for any kind of action that would have gone on there. ISO 400 is super clean, no noise, and f5.6 is wide open there. And I don't need much depth of field there. I only need depth of field to cover the bird, the width of the bird. So plenty of depth of field there. And then blurring out some of the riffled water in the background is cool. It makes it even a little bit cleaner, being able to blur that texture out of the water behind them. So that's also in February, February 3rd to be exact. Uh, all right, image number four. Geez, I had a good day because this is also February 3rd. So three of these images were made on February 3rd. So that's a heck of a day in Africa, but that's Africa for you. Amazing heck of days in Africa. <laughs> They happen all the time. Speaking of which, uh, if you want to join me on 2024, we're going to be going in late January into February in 2024. Um, I haven't even opened that up yet. Uh, we have the dates finalized, but shoot me an email if you want to get on that list early. 
Uh, I have not announced it on the website yet, but we do know the dates now and in general the way the trip's going to lay out. Not everything's finalized yet, but if you want to get on there, get in touch with me before it's actually announced. Uh, anyway, back to this. February 3rd, Nikon Z9. This one was taken with the 24 to 120. This is two thousandth of a second, f5.6, ISO 400. And this is one that was taken using the upside down tripod out the window of the safari vehicle to get the camera a little bit lower than the perspective that you're at sitting in the vehicle. Uh, this is Craig. And this is, to my knowledge, the biggest tusker in Amboseli and one of the biggest tuskers in Africa. And he is awesome. <laughs> and uh, we were able to um, find him. And there were some rangers there who are following him all the time to keep the poachers away, presumably. Uh, but they let us park in there and just let him graze around. And we just kind of sit there and wait for him to come where he goes wherever he wants. And he came right up to us very close, and I was able to make these while well, in the vehicle with the camera on a tripod looking up at him. And then he's flapping his ears because it's hot, and that helps him cool down. And uh, so I caught him in a big flap, and he's looking right at the camera, and it's beautiful and lovely. This is one of those images that I would not consider to be a particularly great image. Like, it's cool. He's obviously a spectacular, stunning subject, but the environment's a little too cluttery for what I would prefer here. I'd love to have Kilimanjaro behind him. I'd love to have not all those big bushes around him. But this is what we were given, and this is kind of the best situation that he gave us. So uh, this was, you know, a, as good as I could have done um, on this trip. And uh, he's just such an incredible creature that he's definitely included in the top 25 for the year. Uh, so anyway, that's Big Craig. He's awesome in Amboseli. We're going to go look for him again next year for sure. All right, here we are with number five. This is Baby Leopard. And this is the first time I'd ever seen a Baby Leopard, and it's awesome. Baby Leopards are so cool, as are leopards. Uh, but this one was hiding in like a uh, cut riverbank where all the tangle of the roots and stuff from the trees that have been eroded, uh, that was its hiding space. And mom was off somewhere, hunting presumably, sleeping, who knows. But so this baby had just found this hiding spot and it was really good hiding spot. So I have absolutely no idea how our guide saw this thing, but they're pretty amazing over there. They can find some incredible stuff. So uh, this one was just hiding in there. And so there wasn't much we could do with this scene other than wait for a moment where it like peeked out and you could see its eyes. And that's what happened here. So it would move around in those roots. And then finally I got a spot where it popped out and you could see its face and its eyes. So that was the moment to click it and then processed it to be nice and dark and blue. And uh, it was in the shade, but it was midday. Uh, so it wasn't like nighttime, but it was a shady scene anyway. So I processed this to feel a little more like dark and mysterious. And I think it worked. But uh, anyway, so Baby Leopard in there. This is the Sony A1 with the 402.8 and the 1.4X teleconverter at 560 millimeters. One one hundredth of a second F4 ISO 800. So shooting that at a pretty slow shutter speed in the darkness there to uh, get a really nice, clean, low noise image. And because the critter wasn't moving and I'm on a nice, steady beanbag in the safari vehicle, I can easily get a sharp photo there at a hundredth of a second. So no problem. Beautiful photo. Okay, so that's gonna be the end of the first five of my favorite photos of 2022. So, I'll see you on the next video if you want to continue along and see the next 20. See you later.